Hey, Apple Friday. This week, the next Snapdragon chip got leaked and it seems to be taking the crown from Apple finally. Intel got in trouble and might be losing some of its billions from subsidies. And Google and Apple also got into trouble and seem to be losing billions to regulators as well. Welcome to the Friday Checkout. This video was sponsored by Brilliant. Okay, for my first story of the week, it seems like the next Snapdragon flagship chip might become the fastest mobile chip around. Early Geekbench numbers for the upcoming 8th Gen 4 flagship Android chip got leaked, and these honestly look pretty insane. More than 3,000 on single core and more than 10,000 on multi core is a lot. For contrast, that is up 47% over last year's 8th Gen 3 in single core and 40% in multi core, which is a completely unheard of leap. Also, it would mean that Qualcomm would almost completely catch up with the brand new A18 Pro from Apple on single core, and it would actually beat that chip pretty handily in multi-core performance. Given that Qualcomm has had a pretty sizable lead in the GPU department for multiple years now, I think it is fair to say that if these leaks are real, Qualcomm would have the stronger chip overall. Can you imagine that? The king dethroned? Anyway, we can see from the leaks that the Qualcomm chip has eight cores, and Qualcomm has also promised that these would be the same CPU cores called Orion that they designed for their new laptop chips. Qualcomm got the Orion cores when they acquired Nuvia. Nuvia, of course, was originally founded by people who were the original designers of many of Apple's A-series processors, so it would be pretty ironic if ex-Apple engineers finally helped Qualcomm dethrone Apple. Anyway, the OnePlus 13, which is coming in October, will almost definitely feature the new chip already, so we will not have to wait very long to see it in action. Plus, rumors persist that Samsung will also get a special 4 Galaxy version for the S25 launch next year, so that might be even faster. Now, I've long thought that peak performance is not actually that important, at least to me, in smartphones. Like, all the phones I've had in the last couple of years were fast enough, and I'd much rather just have more efficiency, but dethroning Apple and doing that with a massive 40 plus percent leap year over year, that's a pretty big deal. Okay, for my second story of the week, it looks like Intel could be losing billions of dollars in promised cash. A report says that the company, which is in line to get $8.5 billion in grants and another $11 billion in loans from the Biden government's CHIPS Act, might not get this cash that it desperately needs after all. The CHIPS Act actually requires participants to reach certain milestones and give certain assurances and actually start with construction, for example, for the money to start flowing. This was built in because the government didn't want to repeat the Trump-era mistake of giving companies like Foxconn money and support, and then seeing those companies mostly abandon their billion-dollar supposed project. But Intel, meanwhile, is being forced to re-evaluate its US foundry expansion in Arizona, New Mexico, Ohio, and Oregon, plus overseas foundry efforts like the foundry in Germany, for example, due to having an overwhelming number of financial issues. So they're low on cash, which means they don't want to start new constructions, but then they also won't get any cash unless they start construction, and that's a catch-22 situation. We've got reports that the German state governments are also nervous about their planned Intel plant in Magdeburg falling through, and EU subsidies haven't come in yet either, and there's no news either way on that. And all this flip-flopping got extra attention this week because NVIDIA's Jensen Huang said that their customers are getting really upset about not getting enough deliveries. NVIDIA just can't meet their demand, and I bet that they would be really happy about an Intel fab if it actually worked. Okay, and my third story of the week is that Apple and Google lost a combined something like 15 billion euros in Europe last week, and more lawsuits are coming their way, both in the EU and in the US. First, the top court in the EU ruled that Apple must pay Ireland 13 billion euros in taxes, which is money that's been sitting in escrow since 2016, waiting for the results of this decision. Just for fun, that is more than 2,500 euros per Irish citizen, and the Irish government is actually fighting to not get that money. Ireland kind of wants to be a tax haven, which is why it allowed Apple to have a ridiculous 0.005% tax rate in 2014, for example, and then also spent 10 million euros in government funds on legal fees defending Apple's right to not pay. So now Ireland has to figure out what to do with its unwanted pot of gold, but I guess they'll figure out something pretty soon. And meanwhile, the same EU court also dismissed an appeal by Google against a fine that claimed that Google abused its dominant market position, favoring its own Google shopping service in search results, and so Big G is on the hook for a 2.4 billion euro fine in the EU too. 
And if that wasn't enough, Google's next fine for another one and a half billion euros is going to court next week. And in the US, the second antitrust lawsuit against the search giant is getting started this week too. As a reminder, the first one was about search. They lost that. The new one is about abusing their monopoly power in advertising. They're gonna fight that now. And overall, this is just a crazy season for regulation. Okay, as for our release monitor, we start the news with Apple's new products. Their new AirPods and the AirPods Pro 2 are now promised an update that will allow them to operate as clinical grade hearing aids with an FDA approval landing just in time for the launch. Meanwhile, the Apple Watches got minor upgrades with the standout feature being a promised sleep apnea detection, which is similar to what Samsung has promised for their new watches too. And as for the iPhone 16 series, I think most people will be very happy with the upgrades to the basics like more capable camera sensors and a 20% battery life boost and much faster wired and wireless charging now at 45 and 25 watts respectively. That said, the much hyped Apple Intelligence is not going to be available at launch and will only roll out very slowly, especially outside of the US, while I also find Apple's new swipeable camera button to look somewhat confusing. But don't worry, Android brands like Oppo and Nubia have already been tipped to be working on their versions of the camera button too, plus of course there's also still Sony, so I bet these are gonna be completely inescapable in like a year or two. <laughs> Oh, and if you're wondering, many people are saying that Apple's AI kind of seems a little dumb and kind of just makes things up as all of its competitors do too. Good times. Anyway, right after the Apple event, Huawei announced their new phone, which is the Mate X2, which seems to be basically an anti-iPhone. On the one hand, the $2,800 device is anything but boring and it allows you to carry a 10.2 inch, basically iPad sized tablet in your pocket. But on the other, you also get a Kirin 9010 chip, which by now is basically three years behind in performance. Still kind of cool though. And talking of kind of weird releases, Sony announced the PlayStation 5 Pro. It has a GPU featuring 67% more compute units and 28% faster RAM, plus also Sony's AI upscaling technology, which should be similar to Nvidia's DLSS. Not bad, but the console will cost $700 with no disk drive either, which is pretty pricey. And while we're at Pisces, Leica also announced another one of its LCD-less digital cameras, and this one costs $9,395. I mean, it's got a full 60 megapixel sensor, and it looks pretty cool, so I guess that's that. And as for our final new release this week, iFixit announced a portable soldering iron powered by USB-C, which is actually looking pretty cool. I've repaired a few small things myself, but I've never bothered to learn soldering, so maybe this will get me there someday. Now moving on to the brief, Google just made sideloading a lot harder. First, sideloaded apps can no longer be easily granted some permissions, like admin permissions, which I guess makes sense. And then second, they also allowed apps themselves to block being sideloaded. So an app maker can decide if their app should only be allowed to run if it was actually downloaded from the Play Store, which I guess I can see that working for like the masses in general, but it's not gonna make power users happy. Meanwhile, in hilarious news, some extremely dedicated fans under the name The Flappy Bird Foundation actually acquired the rights to Flappy Bird from the actual developer and will re-release it after 10 long years. Cool, I guess, uh, let's hope it's not actually ruined by microtransactions. And next, OpenAI has a new model called O1, which is the first model with reasoning abilities, thanks to something called the Strawberry Model. It apparently creates internal chains of thoughts before responding, which should allow it to be less prone to hallucinations and better at things like maths and science. I was honestly too lazy to figure out how that works for this video, but I guess that sounds cool. And if you want to get smart about how AI actually works under the hood, then check this out. Brilliant has a whole fantastic course called How LLMs or Large Language Models Work, which breaks the tech down into small, understandable chunks, and I think this is a fantastic introduction to the topic. Brilliant is a great online learning community designed to help you learn STEM skills. This includes not just computer science topics, but also those around maths, physics, engineering, and more, so you can get a complete picture and learn to think like an engineer. The specialty of Brilliant is that all of their courses are designed from the ground up with interactivity in mind, so they break complicated topics into smaller chunks, which you then have have to practice right away. Not only is this proven to be way more effective at making you actually remember what you've just learned, it's also just way more fun than simply passively consuming information, so you're more likely to stick with it. To try everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org TFC or click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription if you choose to get one, so happy learning and I'll see you next Friday.